Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, Ambassador, thank you for having me and giving me this important uh, podium. Such a difficult situation. I see lots of division and confusion, lots of hatred, lots of misinformation. And uh, everybody speaks on behalf of the children and on behalf of the innocent. But I am not sure about their real intention. But today I can speak on the authority of a Palestinian child. Someone who grew up in that culture. Hamas' first crime against children in the Palestinian societies is not arming them or encouraging them to carry suicide bombing attacks. It's the religious, ideological indoctrination that I had to go through. With one intention in mind, to annihilate the state of Israel. This is Hamas' primary goal. In this truth, there is no confusion. I speak as first-hand witness on Hamas and their intention. My father is one of the founders of Hamas movement. I was there when Hamas was born. I was before Hamas was born. And as I said before, I will be there after Hamas is dead. I am not a part of propaganda. I don't work for nobody. I only represent myself. And on this authority, I speak. So don't be mistaken. And take my words very carefully. Hamas is committing a crime against this generation and the next generations to come. So blaming Israel is not going to solve the problem. Imagine a 10-year-old child. When I disobeyed Hamas, I was tied up to a post. And I was whipped by Hamas' top leader. Top leader. And I don't want to mention his name because he's not worthy. with the electric cable. Every lash, I lost my breath until I lost my consciousness. My father was in prison at that time, and this leader thought that he was my mentor. This is Hamas discipline. This is how they wanted me to be to become a violent savage like them. And the very basic intelligence of a child, when I felt that that was not natural, it wasn't, but I had still to go to the mosque to please my mother and please my father and obey this type of monsters. I hate to talk about my personal struggle. And I hate to be in a position to be at defense. He also don't like to be at defense. Because this is what Hamas did to Israel on October 7th. They put all of us at defense. But this doesn't mean that we are not going to win the war.
growing up in that society. The majority of the Palestinians blamed Israel. And as a child, I took it as a Quran. I took it as a holy scripture that Israel was our problem. But then as I grew up, I start identifying the enemy within. The religious authorities, the corrupt leaderships, who basically did not care about children, they did not care about Palestinians, they still, still don't care about nobody but themselves. And the world has been empowering them against the pere, against the victims. This has to come to an end. Let's put my childhood on the side because maybe a child does not see things for what they are. Maybe I was very bad. I misbehaved myself as a child to deserve to be beaten up again and again and again by Hamas leaders. And some people say, is it a personal problem? Well, it is a personal problem. Do you have any problem with me having Hamas problem as a personal problem? It is a personal problem. And I swear I will not die before I see Hamas dead. Can I make this a goal to my life? You know, unlike many of the leaders who sit here and give Hamas legitimacy by not condemning them, if the entire world stand there and say otherwise, the child witness within will always be there. And nobody can deceive that child anymore. Then, as I grew up, I become the Hamas or the Islamic student movement president in our town. And I became part of the movement. It's just out of the love for my father and our family. I had no other choice, which somehow led me to imprisonment. At the age of 18, just a few weeks after my 18th birthday, May 28, 1996, my problem was not Israel who arrested me during that experience. It was Hamas again, but this time with a lot more brutality, a lot more pain than the pain I experienced on a personal level. In prison, Hamas tortured and killed hundreds of Palestinian prisoners, Hamas members, because Hamas had suspicion that they were collaborating with the State of Israel. I spent 16 months in that first arrest among Hamas leaders. What was called Al-Majd, Hamas security wing, for those who don't know, this division of Hamas. This security wing, they brutally tortured people, putting needles under their fingernails, burning plastic on their bodies, putting off cigarettes in their skin. The screams of hundreds of prisoners over that period of time, how could I forget? And I don't wish for any of you to go through this, such experience to realize what type of monster we are dealing with. It's unfortunate that my father helped establish such an organization. And I don't mean to dishonor him. I love my father and I will always do. I'm not here to dishonor my people. I love my people.
But I cannot believe how far Hamas was able to travel in this madness. And we could not stop them. After I was released from prison, I made very hard choices. And I don't have the time to go through all my motives. But yes, I had many motives. Many motives to fight against Hamas, and I still do. And nobody can get in my way. Not even the United Nations. So the choices I made were against any rational mind. I ended up working together with the Israeli intelligence for 10 years. We had a common goal. That goal was to stop suicide bombing attacks. Hamas, for those who don't know, or those who have short memory, carried many suicide bombing attacks during the 90s and the early 2000s. Dozens of suicide bombing attacks where a suicide bomber took an explosive built wind to inside a bus and blow himself up, killing all type of people, not only Israelis. Americans were killed. Europeans were killed. Other nationalities, including Israeli Arabs, including Muslims. Hamas did not differentiate. Take Hotel Park, for example, on a holiday, on the most sacred Jewish holiday, a suicide bomber go into the dinner, blow himself up, kill more than 30 people. Some Holocaust survivors died in that attack. Dolphinarium, some teenagers having fun at the beach. Hamas suicide bomber killed about 18 and wounded dozens. Look up, see how many buses. It did not stop there. Hamas attacked the Hebrew University. Six Americans were killed in that attack. They targeted synagogues. They targeted everywhere. Knowing the Israeli retaliation. They invite violence. They love violence. Hamas, without chaos, cannot survive. It's their climate. This is where they thrive. When the peace process came, if you follow the history of Hamas and their development or their evolution, whatever you want to call it, Hamas, what sabotaged the peace process through suicide bombing attacks? And they don't have a vision. That's the problem. Because nobody can satisfy their ambition when they are waging a holy war. We're not talking about IRA. We're not talking about other political terrorist organizations, that we can pressure them, bend them, bring them to the negotiating table. We are talking about a religious group that does not believe in political borders, that wants to annihilate an entire race in order to build an Islamic state. I don't know what else can be said about this group. And I don't know why it's not obvious to everybody that the United Nations fail to condemn them. Punch of rapists. This is what they are. Lower than animal consciousness. So, I don't speak only on the authority of that child, 
and someone who grew up in the Palestinian territory, I also speak on the authority of someone who has 10 years of experience in a counter-terrorism of the Israeli intelligence. It took us eight years to capture someone's by name, Ibrahim Hamid, this mass murderer. Eight years, he hid in a small town of Ramallah, less than 20,000 people. It took us eight years to capture him. While he was sending suicide bombers every other day, it was a big nightmare to capture him. And you know now what they are doing? Why the hostage situation that we have in Gaza? They want him. He's on the top of the list to be released. Ibrahim Hamid, remember his name. Look him up. They want mass murderers to go back to the street. And if you ask yourself, the guy that you saw earlier, Yahya Sinwar, with the child and the rifle, this guy was released just recently. Part of the prisoner exchange with Israel. When Israel had to release more than 1,000 Hamas members to return one Israeli soldier back to his mother. And Hamas had a taste to that. So they thought this time they can go and bring 200 hostages and more. So they can bring the only true democracy in the Middle East to its knees. This is why it's a very brutal war. For those who are in the intelligence communities, they understand the significance of this. And they know that Hamas, that Israel cannot release more Hamas terrorists. Because this guy, you saw, Yahya Sinwar, he's the mastermind behind the attacks on October 7th. And how can Israel afford, or how can any of you validate or prove the release of mass murderers back to the street so they can carry a lot more terrorist attacks and hijack an entire society, use hundreds of thousands of people as human shields. Is this our way of solving the problem? We need the correct vision. First of all, we need to identify the origins of suffering where it's coming from, where does it originate from. We need to identify the disease. Then we can provide the cure. Up to this point, we haven't identified the disease. And for those who know the problem, they don't have the courage to stand and say, we have a problem with Hamas. But most of us have our own calculations from Russia to China to the rest of the superpowers, given Hamas cover. Hamas gave the attacks on October 7th as a birthday gift to Putin. For those who did not make the connection. And I don't want to go farther. Now nobody's talking about Ukraine, using Hamas as the wild card in the Middle East igniting a religious war to just divert your attention somewhere else. All those criminals, whether they were high profile or low profile, they are all savages. They are all enemies of children and enemies of humanity. The United Nations and the rest of the international community have empowered con men who used what so-called Palestinian cause to become richer. They were seeking power and wealth. They did not care about the Palestinian people. As the children of Gaza sink in despair and poverty, leaders of Hamas, along with their families and their entourage, enjoy the Four Seasons Hotel in Doha, Qatar.
we can continue putting our head in the sand. But then we have escaped our responsibility. I can go on and on for hours. Or should I say for 45, six years of my life. But I don't have the time. I don't have the time. If we don't eradicate Hamas this, this war and this time, if we don't eradicate them, the next Gaza war is going to be deadlier. It's going to be much greater. If today we are complaining about 10,000 casualties, even though I'm not sure about the numbers because it's Hamas statistics, I don't trust anything they say or anything they do. But even if it was true, it's actually a miracle that we have only this number. The next war, we will talking about hundreds of thousands. This is the fourth war with Hamas and the fifth war in Gaza because also Islamic Jihad had their own war. If we don't eradicate Hamas and other terrorist groups in Gaza this time and give Gaza back to the people of Gaza, we will give them legitimacy. We will show them that we are afraid. And tomorrow, they will come back with vengeance. What made Hamas attack this time a lot stronger than the past wars, because under the international pressure, we had to negotiate with them. And we had to give them legitimacy. This is what encouraged them and gave them power. You know, Qatar, for example, it's a member of the United Nations, playing the mediator, etc. They could have fooled me. They are the ones hosting Hamas. They are the ones who have been funding Hamas. Russia, Musa Abu Marzouk, a Hamas top leader, was in Moscow just yesterday. Okay, to be more accurate, a week ago. What's this? Where democracies, democracies should be united in fighting such savages. All of us saw Hamas. You call a hostage situation, but you want the true term Hamas uses for this? Booty. It's not even hostages. It's not war prisoners. All of us saw Hamas savage grab a teenager girl from the neck, pushing her into the unknown. That's your very freedom. That girl represents your freedom. And None of us thought about the mother of that kid and how she, how she felt about seeing her daughter being dragged that way by a savage who wants to dominate, who sees women as a property. This is how Hamas sees women, a property, something they can own. As they want to own territory, more territory, their lust, their sexual lust, their lust for power, their lust for territory. I had to die many times in order to transcend this mentality. So we are talking about a big problem. It's beyond Israel. And here is the danger. And with this, I will conclude. The danger if, if Israel fail their war in Gaza, which, which is a brutal war, 
because if it was open war, Israel would annihilate Hamas in no time, matter of hours, let's say days, Hamas is finished. But since Hamas strategy, it's a strategic thing of Hamas to take human shields. This is, this crime cannot be forgiven. None of us should forgive this crime. Gambling with children's blood for political gain, it doesn't get worse than this. So Israel now got stained by blood. This is what Hamas wanted to happen from day one. They wanted to sacrifice thousands of children so Israel can take the blame. Digging tunnels and bunkers under hospitals, schools, launching missiles. A Hamas misfire, how many people killed at a hospital and they went so fast to blame Israel and the rest of the world listened to them and listened to their propaganda. Nobody's concerned to check what is true and what is false. Whatever that serve our political and short-term interest, we go for it. Suicidal, not knowing that we are going against evolution. We are going against the collective consciousness of humanity. We are going against the interest of children, the defenseless children who has no one to speak on their behalf. They don't have the power to discern. And yes, they are dying. But who is causing all this death? Blame is the cheap way. It's the way of the coward. Those who have the courage, take responsibility. They don't blame. If Hamas is not defeated, if Hamas is not eradicated in Gaza, we will set the model, we will give the freedom to so many radical groups around the world, especially in Europe. Because many of ISIS have fled to Europe under civilian cover. They are sleeping cells in Europe. And there is a migrant problem in Europe. And there is an Islamic problem in Europe. And this is just a warning. If you really care for the global security, and I speak as a person who was part of the counter-terrorism effort against radical Islamists, if Hamas is not defeated in Gaza, it will inspire many groups around the globe. They will see that few thousands of savages can black, black, blackmail the international community, the superpowers, and bring democracies to their knees. Many of them are watching now, and many of them are very happy about how the world is responding. And many of them are satisfied to see the state of confusion and fear and anxiety. This is the time to get united. Because if Israel fails in Gaza, all of us, we will be next. Thank you for listening and thank you for giving me the opportunity May God bless all of us and protect our children, not only the Palestinian children, but also the Israeli children. Bring the hostages back to their families. And may God bring peace to this divided world. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>